everybody, welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Nur, Chuck, and lightning does strike twice on the Thunder Show. We are going double header pre the huge announcement. One, we have a little mission to make. We made a little mistake in the earlier episodes on Sherry. We're gonna link you up right down below. Thank you, Ryan. We need to be humbled. Everybody's always willing and learning. I made a little bit of a mistake. Read the post below and you'll find out what I did wrong. Number two, we are going to do a little bit of a blind tasting action with some serious, over the top, thunderous, ridiculously high scored Australian Shirazes. Yolamba, Octavius, 96 points. RP, Mr. Robert Parker, 75 US dollars. Um, a wine that spent 22 months in French and American oak. Cambrian, Shiraz, 56 US dollars. Fine, LT was a good player. Only 300 cases made, 96 points. Uh, Robert Parker comes from the Chaputier people and the people that brought you Jasper Hill. And finally, Kill a Canoon Reserve 2004 Shiraz, 97 points. Robert Parker, and this wine's rolling in at 52 US dollars. Little Pepper Johnson action. I'm gonna bring my main man, one of the best people in our organization why I can do Wine Library TV. It's because this guy's done a lot of responsibilities that I used to take care of. Ian, get over here. Take a little smile. What Ian's gonna do is he's gonna pour the wines into these glasses and then put the wines in a bag that coincide with one, two, three. Got it? One, two, three. Um, we're doing that because the wines are all shaped so differently that if when I was pouring it, I could have kind of cheated. Not that I'm gonna guess, but I want to score them. No preconceived notions. And so Ian's gonna do his thing. Ma, let's go. And we're gonna leave now. We want to show you. We're not gonna watch this. Come on, come with me. Go out the door. And look, Eric. Eric Kasten is gonna make a little bit of an appearance. All right, Ma, let's go over here. Let me show. Let me show these people some tremendous memorabilia. We've got, we've got the, the Mickey Schuler tight end signed. I mean, unbelievable. Little Wesley Walker action, baby. Wesley Walker, blind in one eye, and one of the best receivers in the world. What do we got over here? Probably nothing that cool. Ma, wait a minute. Let's zoom in. Is this a replica? I don't think so. That's right, a year ago, front page, Wall Street Journal. Let's go this way. I'm gonna show a couple more things. How you doing, Cam, Ma? How you doing? This is where we get real interesting. Broadway Browning Nagel. He was going to bring the Jets a Super Bowl. I loved this man. He played like four games. He was a mess. I mean a mess. And I deemed him Broadway Browning Nagel. I mean it was it was a real issue. Mo Lewis, one of the best linebackers at the University of Georgia. A great guy. I got to sit with him at a Monday night football game with, against the Atlanta Falcons a couple years ago. He was awesome. A little boomer action. Boomer, I know you watch the show, so there you go. Signed jersey. Wesley Walker's so nice, we had to have him twice. I mean, the man was blind in one eye and unstoppable. And Marty Lyons, a beast. Gasno and Klecko got a lot of the credit, but Marty Lyons was a huge factor in the New York Stack Exchange, some of the best teams of all time. And right over here, really little, little, little lovely tribute to the uh, Conan O'Brien show, which we did the other day. That's a lot of fun. And door is opening, and... You ready? We're all set. All set, man. Thanks, Enjoy, bud. Thanks. Have fun. Thanks. All right. So, let's do this like Brutus. I'm excited about this. So, wine number one, two, and three. Is it one? Is it one, two, and three? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's get into it. all these wines supposedly bring enormous thunder from down under. Huge Parker scores. These are normally over the top fruit bombs. You know, we had the kind of subdued educational show with Sherry's where it wasn't so much of an educational show because I made a mistake. Again, Alviar is not from Jerez, which is a, a, a part of, uh, you have to be from Jerez to be considered a Sherry. So I apologize for that misinformation. That's the last thing I want to do, but I do shoot from the hip. So it's kind of tough. You know, I've done pretty well. We've gone through 300 without me making anything too serious. So I do apologize, Ryan, big ups. Uh, really appreciate you uh, calling me out on that. and. That's what it's all about, and you know I'm always learning, and I don't know jack crap either. We're just tasting away. So, first wine. Let's get into it. Cause we'll make this a little shorter, cause they got a lot of video they've already watched. So, right off the top, massive thunderous licorice meets alcohol. I mean, I almost taste a 
Kahlua-esque kind of component on this nose. Very vibrant, very huge. Big on the nose, definitely very ripe. Blackberry, black cherry coming through. Let's give it a little bit of a swirly swirl. Now a tasty taste. Big massive wine, a lot of alcohol coming through. Obviously a very youthful wine. Um, enormous richness, you'd never mistaken this for anything other than Australian Shiraz. It's a big massive fruit bomb. I do get licorice, I do get a little bit of a liqueur action. Um, I'm also getting a little tiny hint of like a bitter raisin kind of flavor. You know some of those raisins you pick out and they're like bitter? You're like, eh. You know, so I'm going a little eh on the tan and there's some tannins, some structure. These are all very young, very big, age-worthy Shirazes. So we're definitely popping them early. Luckily they were open for a little bit, but a big wine nonetheless. I'm, I'm feeling this wine. This is a roller coaster, new world fruit bomb. You know, old world fans, leave the room. This is not for you. I mean, this is like the bling bling. I mean, like, this is like the outfits that all the Hollywood stars are wearing right now that they're gonna look back in 10 years and be like, how did I wear that? I mean, so, that's what the kind of this wine is. Maybe you'll look back in 10 years and be like, how did I enjoy this style of wine? This is overindulgence. This is a big, big, massive wine. This to me is a 92, 93 point type wine. See what's going on there. Number two, again, no lack o color on these wines whatsoever. Let's give it a little bit of a sniffy sniff. Now this is much more aromatically exceptional. Uh, I like this. It's got a creative aromatic attrition to it. I'm just really, I'm into it. I mean, it's just got really some interesting, very candy-esque, do you remember gobstoppers or jawbreakers? You know, it's got that candy kind of aspect to it. Runts. Do you remember runts? They were in shape of like apples and bananas and all that. I loved those things. This is gobstoppers, runts. Uh, let's throw in even a little bit of spree, which was the candy I was most addicted to. Very candy shop. I'm at the candy shop. Anyway, this is really candy shop-esque, which I like quite a bit. Very cotton candy component coming through. Uh, Twizzlers. This is candy up your face like you've never seen before. This is fun. Let's get some fresh squeezed orange juice to go in there as well. And that's really where you're coming. Like a, like a big bag of Halloween candy. And for some unknown reason you squeeze an enormous amount of fresh squeezed orange juice in there. Big sniff. That's what this wine smells like. Now let's see what it tastes like. This is the real deal. Ma, double header, baby. Let's play two. Ernie Banks, wristbands. We have wristbands. I'm not even wearing one, what a joke. Um, I'm sure you've seen them. Ma, what was that website? Gary has one last thing to say. That's where you can fill it out. Link it up. You want a free wristband? They just bumped our postage up from 50 cents to 97 cents. But we're still committed to send it to your house for free. So if you want to support the Thunder Show, Go down below, fill out your address, and we will hook you up with a wristband. Let me show, I mean, people, I got it. I'm not scared, I'm not scared. Here is the wristband. It's nice, you're gonna like it. You know, I like shooting it at Mott. Anyway, back to the wine. Massively explosive, extremely rich, much fuller and new worldy er than the last wine. This is a absolutely over the top explosive wine that's got borderline jam type qualities to it. It's almost like taking a scoop of jam and pouring it into your average red wine. That's how much flavor is going on. This is a controversial wine. This is a wine that people are gonna draw a line in the sand and say, love, hate, hate, love. Angry, thrilled, yummy, disgusting. I'm kind of in between. There's a time and a place for a wine that brings this much thunder. It's a massively explosive wine. I'm gonna go 94 points on it. I'm feeling it. I think they balance it well. Sometimes fruit bombs are only gobs of fruit. This has substance. 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 Looks and brains and charisma. I think it's pulling it off. You know, how about that Miss South Carolina? Did you see that? That was insane. That's an example of not coming with the brains, with the looks. This is bringing both to the table. You marry this wine. Let's move on. And finally. 
another dark wine. I mean, you know, these Shirazes, they're not gonna be bashful with color. Let's give it a little bit of a snippy sniff. Huh. Actually, aromatically, probably the wine I like the best. There's a little bit of a charcoal. Pencil shavings, making its second appearance in a short period of time. I'm really getting that on this nose. But definitely a charcoal and a smoky-esque aspect to this wine. Also coming with chocolate flavored candies. Maybe like mini Snickers that you have at the movie theater. I like those. That's what's kind of going on here. Without the nuts. So like mini milk chocolate candy with a charcoal-esque aspect and then a very vibrant and explosive plum meets, yeah, pomegranate on the nose. So really wild. Again, aromatically these wines are exceptional. Let's give it a whirl. Also extremely good. A lot of tannins. This wine, out of the three, will last the longest. Great structure on the mid palate, great explosive fruit, very smooth, elegant. At some level, maybe even a better version than wine number two. Um, okay, wine number one is definitely not of the class of these two wines and knowing that they're all rated pretty similar, that's pretty interesting to me. Because these two clearly, in my opinion, are far, far better. Um, number two is a lot more candy shop, which is great. Number three is a, got just a hair of a little old world. I mean, this is like Lindsay and Paris, but maybe Paris wore smoked a pipe today to make her a little more old world. So it's not a lot, you know, it's just an accessory. We're not talking about a whole makeover, um, but that accessory is intriguing and uh, and does make it a little bit more old world, which does kind of tickle my fancy a little more. And so I'm gonna go the classic one, two, three. I'm gonna go 95, 94. I'm gonna go 94, 93, 90 after retasting. God, it's so delicious though. No question of, this is the wine. And there you have it. So, wine number three. Third place, wow. I actually thought this is the wine that won. This is why blind is fun. This wine is the Cambrian Shiraz 2004. It's made by people from Chaputier and it's made, what's the name of the family? Uh, Ella Lawton, right, the Jasper Hill family. Very high pedigree, um, just tremendous, 96 points, uh, 56 bucks but I found it to be really austere and thinner and not as complex as the other two. I went 90 on this. It's still a good wine, but for 56 bucks, you gotta give it a pass. And let's be honest, it's because I said something about Lawrence Taylor. I mean, that's why it is. It is what it is. It's See, even when I was trying to be nice, it's just not that great. All right? Number two. Mott getting angry as the giant fan. Number two, tremendous wine. Uh, again, very close together. This is the candy shop. Come and hit me up at the candy shop. Uh huh. And this is the Killer Canoon, the highest rated of the bunch. Uh, the Reserve Barossa Shiraz, again, 97 points. Robert Parker, 52 US dollars. Uh, very small production, very sought after. You know, what did I go on? About 93 points or nine, something like that. I like it a lot. For 52 bones, it's definitely worth it if you're looking for that roller coaster. You're, you're looking to go around the world, honey. That's <laughs> what they say. Anyway, that's the kind of wine that is brought, bringing an enormous amount of candy and happiness. And so that means that the winner is, I didn't even remember. Yeah. And this one really does have the tradition and pedigree. 75 bones, 96 points Parker, real wine. Give me some Northern Rhone kind of aspects on the finish. Uh, 2002, it's a little older. Uh, 22 months in oak, uh, not oak monster, any of them, which was shocking. I expected all three to be. So no, ah, today, but maybe a lot of, ah, tomorrow. Are we dropping hints? Let me just say one other thing. Episode 109. Gonna see you guys tomorrow. It's a huge, huge day. Question of the day, question of the day. What is your official prediction for tomorrow's? I'll put a thread up. A thread in the uh, forum? Okay, we're, uh, we're gonna go into, yeah, do you wanna go instead of comments? Mott and I are disagreeing, agreeing. We'll go with Mott, cause we're just gonna, you know, gotta throw the guy a bone, he's the man. We're gonna give you a link to the thread, to the forum. That means you're gonna have to sign up for that if you haven't. What is your official prediction for what tomorrow's announcement is. Because people, 
Say it with me. You, with a little bit of me. And you know what? That's the biggest hint of all, Mon. We're changing the wine world. Whether you, they, Mott, me, Sherry's, Ryan, the Lynx, the Cats, the Wines, like it or not.